Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome to the CAS Business School presentation with Martin Rich um, for the BSc Ons Management. My name is Tom Brownrigg and I uh, am the Recruitment and Admissions Officer for CAS Business School for the undergraduate programmes. Um, so we're just going to go through a, a quick presentation today on the BSc in Management programme. Martin, who's the course director, is going to take us through that in the next couple of minutes. Please, if you do have any questions, then just send them to us in the chat box. Um, we may be able to answer some questions as we go through, but if there's anything we miss, then we'll also answer the questions at the end. So we'll have some time for that also. So, Martin, take it away. Thank you, Tom. Yes, I just want to quickly go through some of the background to the course. As Tom says, very happy to take questions um, which you might want to type in as time goes on. But I also just want to say a little bit about how this course actually works. Right, so, let's see, move on to the next slide. Which will be. Okay, first thing to tell you this is true of all the CAS undergraduate courses it's a Bachelor of Science as a BSc. So, the emphasis is on analysis, it's on numeracy, it's on some sort of logical understanding and reasoning. It's the emphasis on thinking about how you might make decisions as a manager. Your background, obviously you've been doing typically A-levels or IB or whatever. Getting through the school exams is a start of a really important journey. Once you get into degree level study, you'll be jumping to another complete level of analysis and understanding and depth of trying to figure out why things happen in a particular way. So your school exams have been a great start for that. I know some of you also have some tremendous experience in, um, some of you have working experience, but your course is going to expand on that in a very effective way. Okay, here are the basics. It's a three-year course or it's four years if you go off and do a placement after your second year. I'll talk more about that in a moment. There's a whole range of different teaching methods. You spend some time in lectures, quite a lot of time working in teams. One of the first things we do is to get you to work initially in teams which we will allocate later on in teams which you might choose yourself. We get you to discuss things in class. We spend a lot of time looking at examples, looking at cases. You will do some online work. You will have to do presentations and you will have to do project work both as a team and as individuals. Typically, in the first year at least, you will have 10 to 14 hours per week in some sort of teaching room and we expect you to do typically 20 hours of both reading and group assignments to supplement that. So you're doing perhaps 34 hours per week. The assessment contains a mixture of teamwork and individual work. And again, right from the first term, we will ask you to do a range of different assessments. There's both coursework and exams, of course. And throughout your three years of study, you will be supported by a personal tutor. Just to give you an idea about the structure, first of all, in the first year, you need to do a core module, which goes across the whole of the, um, both terms of the first year, which covers financial maths and business statistics. That's taken by all CAS undergraduate students. So you will find yourself studying not just alongside other management students, you'll find yourself studying alongside business study students, people are doing finance, other things like that. And what we'll do for that is put you in a group with people who we think have a similar level of understanding of maths to you. So we will try and do a simple analysis when you come in and we'll match you with people who've got the same sort of background. There's also a whole bunch of different modules which are specific to the management course. There's one called a practice of management. There's one called management science, which is where we look at mathematical approaches. So you need to be good at maths with this, mathematical approaches to deal with management. There are a couple of modules around the theme of systems thinking. 
and that's to do with looking at the way that different problems within an organisation are interconnected. It's something that you don't often get in an undergraduate degree, and it's something where you have the chance to go out and do a bit of analysis for yourself, so that one of the things that this year's first year management students have done has been to go out and look at a music venue. They can choose a music venue and go out and anal analyse the customer flows, how people walk around the music venue, how it deals with the people going in there. And they do that to get experience in figuring out how to do research into a problem. They do that to figure out how you look at an issue, how you find out the solutions, how you find out the answers. Later on, we do courses in, or do modules in operations management. We look at what makes supply chains work. We look at some tools for business forecasting and for decision analysis. There's also, from year one, there's a whole set of different electives. So that, for example, if you're interested in the finance side of things, and every year we have a lot of students who are very committed to doing a management degree, but also want to take a whole bunch of different finance electives. So you can do financial management, financial accounting. We have a lot of people who in year one look at business law. We have people who later on look at modules which are specific to with entrepreneurship. We look at people who are interested in human resources. And just to give you an idea of some of the other modules which are available out later on, again, as electives, there's an elective in corporate social responsibility. There's one in the second year in creativity, innovation and design. Very interesting, rather unusual in terms of the sort of things that management students do. There's one, a very topical one, to do with social media theory and practice that's offered now in the third year. So that's an overview of the structure as it stands at the moment and I would stress that this structure can change from year to year so it may well be that what you do starting next year will be slightly different to the structure we've presented here. But again I just want to draw attention to a couple of key things. In the first year, the first term as I said two core, three core modules, there's a maths and statistics one, but two core modules which are specific to um, management course, there's systems thinking and action research, that's where we give you tools to go out and understand how you find things out about what goes on within an organisation. There's practice and management which is to do with what we call active teamwork and management theory. We understand what, we look at what management is. Management, I would say, is about planning, organising, leading, controlling. We unpick those ideas and look at what those mean. In the second term, we look at management science, look at various different functions. In the second year, we get some extra tuition, business modelling, business statistics, and you have four electives and four core modules. So half of your work in the second year is based around elective modules. Half of the time is spent in modules that you've chosen yourself. So you have a lot of opportunities to take your own path through this degree. The third year, I just want to draw your attention to one thing, which is that there's a final year project, which is a big piece of independent work, which you do throughout the third year. Typically, that's a significant essay where you have to find out about things. One thing which we're doing quite a lot this year is getting people to work in businesses and write up some of the experiences and to reflect on those experiences and connect the practice which they observe the working businesses with some of the concepts and some of the theory which they have discussed and learnt about earlier on in the course. In terms of admissions, we've got students from all sorts of different places around the world. So I can talk about A-levels, but I can talk about international baccalaureate, but obviously other people with different qualifications now, admissions people, can help with exactly what the different qualifications mean. But in general, we're looking for three A's day level or 35 points if you take the IB route. We expect a grade A at GCSE Maths and we expect a grade C at GCSE English. If English is not your 
first language, we're looking for either IELTS of 6.5 or TOEFL of 100. So that's a sort of standard of English that we're looking at. I want to say a little bit more. I'm going to say a little bit more about the core values which this course is about because those relate quite closely to what employers are looking for. So one thing we do is to make sure that you are really effective and active team workers. It means that you can join part of a team and then you can go back and say, this is what I offered to the team. This is how the different people work together. You can unpick the approach. And one of the effects of that is that when people arrive in employment at the end of management degree, they're typically able to go straight into a team of people working together. And as we would say, they're able to hit the ground running. One of the things that we say management students need to be really good at is not just the whole area of management science, but the whole area of being able to apply mathematical approaches to dealing with business and management problems. And that again links straight through to one of the things that employers are looking for, which is strong numeracy. So you have to, if you don't have A-level maths or the equivalent, we will get you up to the sort of level in the first year of having A-level maths. And again, we have that strong numeracy which we know is something which employers want. The third core value which runs through the management course is that we want you to be able to deal with difficult business and management problems, particularly with problems that, um, particularly, particularly with problems where it's difficult to find one exact answer. And that links in with a third of the issues on there, and that is to have leasing skills. Just going to take a question from John, which is about B grade and GCSE. And in fact, maybe Tom, you could clarify yeah. because I think we are now taking people with B grade and B GCSE maths. That's right. Yeah. So for students with um, the B grade in GCSE maths for management, um, they may be considered. They may be required to complete a pre-sessional maths program um, before they enrol. Um, but we are accepting students with B grades in GCSE maths, providing they meet the other entry criteria. Um, so that's not to worry about. That's that's quite a recent change, John. So maybe our website hasn't been completely updated since then. I think actually the website has been updated in my slides because we were discussing this issue of GCSE maths yeah. just within the last few weeks. So I wants to be cautious, but thank you for clarifying that. When will the plea session in maths take place? Um, I don't have the exact dates, um, but we'll obviously send you information if, if that's applicable to you. Uh, so 10th that's... of September, we just speak. Yeah. Rachel has just confirmed. Rachel is working in the back room as I speak yeah. and has confirmed it will be the 10th of September. So the course starts as a whole at the end of September, beginning of October, 10th of September, the start of that. Can I just go back and say a little bit, do we accept students with A star, A, B, with A star in maths? Tom, I think the first thing I would say is try us, we would look at each case on its own merits. Yeah, that's right. So. I mean, we'll look at each individual application on an individual basis. Um, so obviously, Martin's already mentioned it is a quantitative subject. Um, so we would look favourably on a student that had achieved an A-star maths. That being said, the entry criteria are three A's um, for the programme. So we would have to look at each case on its own individual merit. And Natalie, the pre-session, as we said, it's before the start of the course. It's before the, the start of the course, yeah. So it's just an extra week. I think it's eight days of, of classes for students just in preparation before they begin the programme. Um, for international students, that wouldn't have any implications for the visa. You know, it doesn't change the course duration per se. Um, and it's also free of charge as well. 
Thank you. I thought that, but I wondered if you could affirm that. Just want to run through. Brilliant. Just want to run through the rest of the um, issues of what employers are looking for. Strong English language skills. You have to do a lot of um, presentations, a lot of written work. Foreign languages are desirable. One thing which we do, we don't offer languages as an integral part of the course, but what we do is we offer a lot of opportunities for learning languages while you're at CAS and doing that as supplementary parts of the course and those are very popular. We're also looking for excellent interpersonal skills and it's a bit of a cliche but the evidence I get over and over again is that people who come through the management course, they're good at working with people and they're good at understanding how people want to work. And really the important one is we're looking for people who are really committed to their career path and that's something which comes back over and over and over again um, from employers. Just looking at John's question here. Yeah, so I'll take this one, Martin. Yeah, so John, um, obviously, as you say, the initial deadline on um, on UCAS um, for applications was the 15th of January. Um, so you did meet that deadline. Um, so as I'm sure Rachel's going to say to you now, um, we should have a decision for you by the 31st of March. Um, so it was our objective to have any students that had applied um, by, before the 15th or on the 15th of January um, to have a response for them before the 31st of March. Um, so obviously we received a really high volume of applications, so we are working on that, John, but hopefully you'll have an answer before the 31st of March. Okay. Just to give you some background, typically over the last five years, 25% of people who went through the management course attained a first class degree, 57% attained an upper second class degree. We have looked closely at these figures. We do believe that the people who attained the first have gone through the course, have the right sort of background experience and have the right sort of ability to do that. The average salary for those who went into full-time employment straight after graduation, six months after the course, on the date that we have, is £31,000. So they do go into effective um, jobs where which tend to be well paid. Just to take Natalie's question, you know, Rachel has answered that, that is optional, whether or not to take the... Um, um, to take the please optional course. Do you want to, Tom, address Ali's question about financial constraints? What we advise him? Okay, Ali. Well, we obviously um, would advise students, obviously, that you know this is an investment, um, and we wouldn't want students to come over um, and study with us if they were really, really struggling um, for money. So we would advise you that it is a a significant investment and you need to be prepared for that but we do have um, frameworks in place um, such as our student service center we also have scholarships for international students um, providing they can prove a certain academic criteria um, so you can find certain uh, you can find some information on that on our website um, and obviously contact the undergraduate program um, admissions team for specific information on whether you'd qualify for those scholarships. The international scholarship is actually worth up to £2,000 per year. So that would obviously assist you in your financial position. Um, but we would advise candidates, obviously, to, to really plan ahead and make sure that you, you've um, taken into account all of the costs and, uh, and, and um, spending that you would undertake when you come to study in the UK but obviously we can support with that and help with any information that you require. I think I'd amplify that by saying there are sources of help available but be aware that London is not a cheap place to live, it's an expensive city and I know I think if we're talking to you about the economics we would want to be pragmatic about what can be done. I'm going to take, there's the question from Toyin, which is to do with 
the foundation of course. I don't know, you want to take that one, Tom, and I'll take the one from Robert. Yeah. Um, it's 75 to 100%, it's the business foundation. Yeah. It's the LSBU. Okay, okay, so Ian. Um, well, to be honest with you, I'm not entirely sure whether we do take that. My colleague Rachel's just confirmed to me that we don't actually accept the foundation programme from London South Bank, South Bank University. Um, unfortunately, um, we may be able to look into your qualifications that you've received from your home country, but unfortunately, we can't act, actually accept that foundation program for entry onto our bachelor's in management. I'll take Robert's question, which is they are pretty good. We have a lot of students go on and do postgraduate courses. Quite a few of them stay within London, but we also have a huge number of people go and do courses in continental Europe. I spend a lot of my time with third year students actually doing references and recommendations and talking to them about what particular strengths they're going to apply so that, for example, I've just done a reference for a student who's interested in going to Copenhagen Business School who have very specific requirements. Um, they have other people in similar sort of positions. So the answer is the answer, the short answer to your question is pretty good. Um, yeah, just another quick question from um, Ali, also about external scholarships. Um, Ali, as far as um, scholarships that are actually offered by City University, um, the, we only have the international scholarship, which is um, worth up to two thousand pounds. We do, we do actually have other lines of funding. Um, but we don't actually have the information with us, so we'd ask you to contact us directly. Um, and my colleague, who, who actually champions the scholarship programmes, can give you a little bit more um, specific information. You can also take a look on our website for the various lines of funding that we do offer, and our partner um, sponsors offer also. Um, a business foundation, a question from Natalie. Um, who's doing a business foundation program at Coventry University. Um, Natalie, I think off the top of my head, we do accept the Coventry University Foundation, but we'll have to double check that for you. I can't guarantee that. Um, so my colleague Rachel will probably just drop you a quick message now to confirm. Um, X Wong. X Wong. Um, it's a matter of, just a matter of time. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's just a matter of time. Um, so we'd obviously um, thank you for your patience. Um, and at the moment, we we have obviously received a high volume of applications. I mentioned that students who'd applied before the fifteenth of January, um, they they would receive an answer before the thirty first of March. So you, if you're in that category, you are a priority at the moment. But we're working through applications as quickly as possible. Um, so I think as, as far as questions, we'll just carry on with the presentations. Um, just a quick question from Anshu Lamehra. Um, I have a British passport but reside in India. Do I still require to take the TOEFL? Um, well, we'd ha have to actually look at the qualifications you've attained from India um, because it needs to be equivalent to GCSE grade C at English. If you've attained that, then you won't be required to do TOEFL. If you haven't, then you would be required to do a secure English language certificate. David, uh, I think you're in the same position as lots of people doing yeah. levels and IB that it won't be confirmed until we've done those, but I think that's exactly, yeah. you're not the only one. Say yeah, so David, if you were interested in applying, we'd ask you to apply before the 30th of June and we would need some information on what your um, your personal tutors think you would be able to attain. Um, so we would need a reference with predicted grades on what you're going to attain from your Italian baccalaureate. Um, so Ryan, that's actually a very good question as well. Is it in transferring part way through. Within CAS, the system we have is that you can transfer from one CAS undergraduate degree to another at the end of the first year, so long as you get through 
all the exams with no hiccups. And typically, we would ask you to do a statement explaining why you want to transfer and why one course is more interesting than another. So there is a transfer point, but it's easier if you do it. It's easier if you choose one you want to stick with at the beginning, but you certainly can move from one to another. Let me just move on to the next couple of slides for presentation. Um, if I can just interject, Martin. Yeah. David, we'll, we'll get back to you on that question just at the end. We'll, we'll carry on with the presentation for now, um, and then we can come back to you at the end of the presentation. Thanks, David. I think it should be no problem. In, in principle, it's just what document you send at what point. Um, yeah, what do people do after the degree? Lots of them go into consultancy firms. And in fact, one thing that we do in the third year of the management degree is to give people like experience of doing a proper consultancy project. One of the modules you do in the first term is in effect where you work in teams as a consultant. We have a lot of people who go into internal consultancy type jobs, places like IBM, um, other organisations like that. So one of the things that we find is that almost every business needs people internally who can act as troubleshooters, who can act as helpers in terms of figuring out what direction the business is going to go in. Lots of people go on to Master's degree course, just mentioned that a moment ago. We send people, quite a few people actually stay at CAS and do Master's degrees at CAS, so I'm teaching, as it happens, more than one student on a master, on master's degree who's been through the undergraduate management course. We also have quite a few people go to LSE for the master's course. They want to stay in London but want a different experience. We have people, we have someone who went, a couple of years ago went to the Oxford Internet Institute doing something very distinctive. And as I said, quite a few people um, going to courses in continental Europe or the US as well. We do have quite a few students who have backgrounds in family businesses and quite a few people will go back and take the BSc management ideas and apply them to their family businesses. So that's a particular pattern which applies to a fair number of people who've studied with us. Just to give an idea of some of the employers, um, Coca-Cola, actually, Coca-Cola, we should mention in terms of scholarships as well, because they've offered funding for some of our students. American Express, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, Accenture. Not everybody goes and works for a big name, but we do send people to all those different places, and we send people to smaller businesses as well. Just gives an idea of the sort of places where people um, move on to, and again, in terms of further study, that'll, I hope, confirm the fact we send people to Bocconi University in Italy, we send people to all sorts of different places as well, and again, a whole range of different activities that people have done once um, they studied with us. Okay, just wanted to go back and talking about some of the questions. Let's take, Tom, can you take that one from my aunt? Yeah, so a question from my aunt. Um, sorry to hear that um, your status on UCAS was that your application was unsuccessful. My aunt, that, that will be the case that at this stage your application hasn't been successful. Um, so we'd, we'd ask you to contact the email address that Rachel has actually pasted in cashug at city.ac.uk. We can give you some, some further feedback as to why it was unsuccessful. Um, there may be further information that, that, that we've missed out, so definitely check with us why the application was unsuccessful and we can give you some feedback and some guidance on how you may be successful in the future. I'll take the one both Charlene and John have asked rather similar questions about getting jobs. Um, I don't want to get the technicalities of getting a working so it is, I'm afraid, quite strict, but equally if you get a job when you get sponsored by an employer, um, you will get the visa. It's, we have a lot of international students who do go and find jobs in London. It's not an easy job market. I don't think it's more difficult for international students than for anybody else. It's a matter of the qualifications you have, your determination to do the job, and how you move on with that. Again, working with a third year 
at the moment I have lots of people attending assessment centres for major employers, lots of people negotiating with employers at the moment. Ironically, I've had one very good student just in the last couple of weeks who said that they've got a job. The problem is that the employer wants them to start doing some work before their final exam. So I'm actually a little bit concerned about that because that might prejudice their long-term um, success in employment if it means they can't do as much revision for their exams as I might do. But certainly we do find, again, for all the reasons I was talking about, we find our students tend to be regarded as being quite employable. If I can just add to that as well, Martin, um, obviously another way that international and our home students um, can enhance their job prospects is through the placement year. Um, so students at the end of their second year of study um, do have the option to go and work for a company for a year and it was actually found in a survey last year that 85% of employers looked for when they were giving graduate jobs look for students or applicants that had completed an internship or work experience with them beforehand so there's certain um, certain ways that which we assist with students to to find work after their after their studies are completed I will expand that. Ben Kevin's actually asked two really good questions. But I'll expand that. The way the placement work, year works is, in effect, you take your first year of employment before your final year of university. So by the time you get to 30, you've done the same number of years in study and the same number of years for employment, but you will have done a fairly substantial year of work before your final year of study. And the people who go on placement it's not just saying they're back in position to seek, to seek employment, but they also bring incredibly valuable experience back to the final year of the undergraduate course. Um, Kevin, your first question about recommending students to the firm. We have a very active career service. The one thing which I would say is I would encourage you to be quite assertive in making sure that you take advantage of the services they have. They do things like interview practice, they put people in touch with companies, they organise um, they, 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 they organize sessions with categories of employers. So take advantage of that. They're very active indeed. We also have a lot of students who are involved in student-led activities to do with promoting appointments. So for example, there's an organisation called ISEC, A-I-E-S-E-C. For many years, students doing the management course have been very active in that. And that's student-led, but they go out and look at employment possibilities. They do volunteering and things like that as well. The placement year is absolutely not necessary. It's an option. It's a minority of students do it. We don't fix the numbers who do it, but you've got to apply. You've got to convince the employer you can do it. Um, but it's a very attractive option and it will certainly enhance your employability. Um, yeah, so thanks Martin. Just to go back to a question from Ass, um, I've still not received an update on my application status. I do French baccalaureate. Um, so as obviously, I mean, we receive thousands of applications, so it will be difficult for us to go back. So if you can email us on the email address provided, we can let you know if there's any missing documents. It may just be a case that you're you're awaiting an answer like lots of our applicants are at the moment and we'll be working as hard as we can to get a response to you as soon as possible. Kevin has also asked a question about a year, he says a semester abroad. In fact, what we offer is a possibility of taking a second year abroad in place of studying at CAS. Yes, that's Quite a few students do that. It's a tremendous boost if you can do it. We've got people who have spent years of the, the popular places to spend a year abroad. We have lots of people who go and work, spend a year studying in the Far East. We have links with a couple of different universities in Hong Kong and Singapore. We have links with Emory University in Atlanta in the US. So we have people who go off and work there. We also have a couple of brothers that we have building a link with University of British Columbia in Canada, we're building a link with one in Queensland in Australia. All the years abroad which we offer are taught in English, I think that's one thing I would add. And we do 
a certain amount of work to make sure that you cover equivalent material to what you would cover if you spent in state of CAS for your second year. Yeah, and just uh, one more question from Al um, about what proves more popular between the study abroad program and the placement year. Would you say taking a placement is more effective with the obvious work experience or not necessarily? Al, that's completely down to you. I think year on year it, it varies the numbers. Um, so we couldn't we couldn't really provide too much guidance on which is more effective. It's down to personal choice. What we maybe would say is if you are an international student, um, it, you know, it may be worth taking into consideration that stability really helps with your studies. Um, and, and some of our international students find that they would prefer to stay at CAS um, during, their, during their international studies. Um, but that's completely down to you, really. Um, and just one other question from Ayushij. Um, if I miss my condition by one point, will my application still be considered? Um, it will absolutely be considered. Um, we can't offer any guarantees, but obviously it comes down to your the other parts of your application, um, whether CAS was your first choice, um, you know what your what your career goals are, and we will be in contact if we need further information about that. I think I've said this, but you're the OP. There's no limit to the number of people who take a sandwich here. It just depends how many people apply. That's just exactly. how we do it. We don't have a set number. Typically, it's I would guess about ten percent take a sandwich here, another ten percent take it abroad. But it does vary quite a bit from year to year. Should we go further down? Yeah. So Where does City University live from Roberts? I think that's actually a good one. We have a, deals with a number of different people who provide student accommodation. Um, a lot of it is within this immediate area. It's a nice spot in London to live in. We're on the edge of the City of London. We've got, I think, the ones which are popular. There are quite a few who live over near Liverpool Street Station. There are a couple of accommodation places there. There are some who live just down the road in um, Goswell Road. There's a building, I think, at just John Street and Goswell Road. There's certainly a building within half a mile of the university itself. So, not all by any means, but a lot of them live close to the university. And a lot of them live in parts of London which they very much enjoy living in and get a lot out of the student accommodation. Yeah, just to add to that, uh, Martin, yeah, I mean, do we, we had a question earlier about the costs. Something to bear in mind is that we would normally predict that the living costs um, for London for our students at CAS would be from around £8,000 to £10,000 per year. Um, so that is also something to bear in mind. Um, but as Martin says, we have various... Um, um, we have various residences which are offered through City University and then we also have links with private accommodation also. Um, again, that's something that we, we offer a service at the Student Centre um, to assist students with that. What's the exceptional rate uh, with what John asks? Before you give a straight answer to that, can I give an indication why I think straight answers and always aren't useful? Because we always get get people applying who are clearly not even in the frame to apply for a course. We can get people apply for multiple courses, but nevertheless it might be worth giving some indication. So it's the... Is that one there, what the acceptance rate is for the course? What the acceptance rate is in this particular course. John, again, that's that, that really um, depends on the year. It can change, it can vary. Um, what I would say is that we have um, a slight change in regulation where we can accept more students with a certain grade. Um, and we are um, making changes so that we can host more students at CAS year on year. Um, but to give you a specific acceptance rate, it would be quite difficult. Um, but what we would say is that if you can attain your targeted grades um, in your offer, then you are guaranteed a place at CAS. And what's the last day that we give out offers? Um, this one. Yeah, so I, I think the last date that you can apply on UCAS is the 30th of June. Um, and I would say that the final day that we'd be issuing offers would be around six weeks after that. 
Um, Fletch McAloy is on 13.5. That sounds like one for Rachel, doesn't it? It does sound like one for Rachel. <laughs> Rachel's hiding, though, at the moment. I, I would say that we would um, we would consider it, but it would, unfortunately, be unlikely. But what we would say is it would depend on what, you, what grade you've attained in mathematics and English also. Rachel is not in <laughs> convey that to you. Um, I, 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 I think, right, Martin. <laughs> I think, well, while Rachel see, I think IGSE grade C, that's fine, isn't it, in English? IGSE yes. is the same. Thing. I don't think IGSE is in GCSE. IGSE, IGCSE is in GCSE, so. Right, okay, so that's as long as that's your first language, your second language in these particular last two years. Um, Mitchell requirements in Irish leaving certificate. Julian is taking A levels at the moment. I think it's fair to say if you get the A level grades, then yes. you're going to be in the chance we don't yeah. look at. Yeah, we'd we'd base the offer on on your qualifications that you'll be undertaking um, this year. So providing you can attain the, the, the targeted grades and hit our entry criteria in this, you know, with regards to A levels, that will be fine. When do you apply for the T4 visa? That sounds like one for one of you two. Yeah, well, the T4 visa, um, I mean, we'd encourage students to apply as soon as possible. Um, what we'd say is that you can't travel um, anything up, uh, anything after three months up to the course start date. Um, exactly. So, uh, as my colleague Rachel said, would only receive your cast letter um, up to three months before the course start date, as, and we would we would um, advise students as soon as they receive their unconditional offer letter um, and their cast letter, we would advise them to really begin the tier four application process. Again, we offer a service in which we can advise students with that also. Um, scholarships over the past reached need full funding. I think yes, but not very often is a short answer to that one. We certainly have had some which have been very pretty good, but that's the minority. Um, Carini, yes, absolutely. It's very much the discussion of the lecturer about if you want to sit in the class and something you want to do, go and talk to the lecturer. Most people will be happy for you to do so, or they'll be happy for you to look at the class notes. And also, just to stress what I said earlier, that among people who've done management, there's a very strong demand for people who want to build one or two banking and finance modules into the management course. So that, for example, we've had a bank strategy module, which has been popular as an elective, there are always a number of people who do it. David, uh, no, we have a very high proportion of international students, but there's no sense of there being a set number at all, but we have people from all over the world. There are a number of different places in the world where we have tend to have clusters of people, but um, no, there's no set percentage as to whoever comes to us. In terms of scholarships and the regulations that you must have attended a university previously, do you know anything about this one, Tom or Rachel? Um, Rachel obviously looks after the these scholarships, um, we'd have to check on the guidelines, I think. Um, do you know anything on the, off the top of your head, Rachel? Um, for the CAS International Student Scholarship, there, there wouldn't be any restriction. Um, for the Lord Mayor's Scholarship for UK students, there may be some, um, some rules about that, uh, but we would have to check that. Unfortunately, it's up to whoever sponsors the scholarship and they can put more or less whatever restriction they like. I mean, certainly from our point of view in terms of admissions, if we can see you're serious about the fact that you started at university somewhere else and changed your mind, certainly wouldn't work against you. Um, John, as national students, yeah. we've always said 20 hours a week. That's yes. our, been our convention. Yes, that's 20 hours a week is, is maximum. Agnes, oh, well, Jack McKenzie starting salary. I mentioned earlier on the figure of 31,000 six months after starting. So that's the best indication. 
that we've got Agnes. Agnes, yeah, for the um, for the bachelor's in management, the uh, triple triple distinction with star um, is is equivalent to our entry requirements. You would, on top of that, you would also need to have equivalent to GCSE English Grade C and GCSE, GCSE Maths Grade A. But yes, we would accept um, that grade in the BTEC National Extended Diploma, providing it's 18 units. Okay. Right. Okay, so I'll, um, Rachel will be responding to you um, in a private message now, if you can just bear with us um, regarding the scholarships. Okay. What events take part during induction week? Is it compulsory? Inevitably, there are a few students who find that they have visa problems or travel problems or whatever who miss part or all of the induction week and of course if that happens we would still welcome you on the course but if absolutely possible you should take part in the induction week it's a mixture you get to find out about the course you get quite a bit of time at the university you get to meet your tutors you get to meet the other students but i think there's also the opportunity that but in social events take place during the induction week as well. Yeah. So it's a fairly full on week and a chance to get mm -hmm. immersed in. Yeah, exactly. It's not only a, a chance to, to get a grounding in what you're going to be studying over the next couple of semesters, but it's also a chance to obviously meet your peers um, and obviously get to know the people that you're going to be studying alongside and, and really get yourself settled in before studies begin. So we would definitely say that it is compulsory. That's, unless you have some, I mean, obviously, as I said, if something goes wrong and yeah. you turn up late, then obviously we won't stop you attending, but if no. possibly, if possibly, you should come along. Um, Hetes bus, is it possible to visit apart from open days? I think it might be difficult to get you to visit a lecture, but certainly I would hope you can come and visit the court, visit yeah. the university and chat to people, that's absolutely fine if you can't make it. Yeah, absolutely, so um, you just need to send us an e a quick email, um, just asking um, or, or telling us when you're going to be in, in London and within reason we can we can see you any time so if you can just arrange an appointment with the CAS undergraduate team we'll be happy to have you. Yusuf, oh it's great, well I don't, it, it depends what you're after, it's rather what you might expect from people on business and management degrees so that a lot of people are interested in their own entrepreneurial activities so that I mentioned ISEC Already. That's a student-led club. Lots of people are involved in that. People go off and do fundraising. I've just been talking to one of my first-year students who was involved in a thing called a jailbreak, which is where they get sponsored for charity to get as far as they can from London. And um, she's probably just sent me a video. I believe they ended up in Geneva. Not quite sure how they did it, but again, that was an initiative. Um, lots of sporting activities. I had, in fact. One of the students who graduated last year was um, keen on men's hockey, which is a sport which I don't know very much about, but in fact he actually landed a job in sports management on the basis of that. So there's certainly lots of that as well. Personal tutor? Or, yeah, or sorry, tutor. sorry, Martin. Yeah, I think, uh, David, you're referring to something I mentioned. Sorry, I wasn't particularly specific about it um, regarding your predicted grades. Um, so. When I say a personal tutor, I mean a referee, a reference, um, who is possibly a student counsellor who can who can offer an insight as to what grades you have been predicted. But um, also, once you're here, I think the other thing you might be asking about is once you're here, you would have a personal tutor who is going to be a okay, yeah. um, who's, 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 who's going to be typically one of the lecturers who teaches on the course or one of the faculty at the university. One important about the personal tutor is picking up on Tom's point. That's also somebody who may then go off and write references for you when you seek employment, even if you're seeking part-time work later on. Yeah, so a question from Kevin um, regarding the aperture from Germany. Um, so we do accept the aperture um, and we do have an equivalent grade in mathematics. Off the top of my head, I think you need to attain 1.6 uh, 
um, with a grade good in mathematics and English. Um, so that would be seen as equivalent to um, our A levels. The sort of, to give you some background, the sort of maths and statistics which we learn in the first year, you have to be up to speed partly with calculus, you've got to be on top of calculus, you need to be on top of maths for finance, so you need to understand how to calculate interest rates and things like that. And you need to have a very good knowledge of basic statistics because that's something which is going to set you in um, a very good position for the work you do later on. And obviously you have to be familiar with using Excel, you have to be very much very computer literate, but we will deal with that if you would like to speak. Julian, the short answer is yes, I don't know the details, but I do know that lots of people at the university play rugby. Um, yeah, I mean, we have rugby teams, football teams, um, lots of different societies, so the student experience is really excellent. You know, if there is some, some kind of team that's, um, that you're looking to join, um, then you can look into starting that own society yourself if there's not already a society. But we do know that there are rugby, football, tennis teams, um, so there's lots of opportunities. Um, in addition to that, there will be a, a new sporting complex which will be opened hopefully by September 2014 um, and that is brand new and uh, there's been quite significant investment by the university in really offering um, not only excellent academic um, standards but also a great student experience also. Uh, David, uh, yes, you've come back on the point about, yes, the pastoral tutor, the student has one to outcast, that is somebody who's a member of staff, typically. Sometimes they're actually part-time members of staff, but they're people who are around and will make a point of meeting or at least once a term. Okay, so Tarina, uh, Ta Tarinisa, sorry, um, regarding the scholarship for international students, will students be offered a scholarship by the university? Or does the student have to email the university asking for it? You would be required to apply for the scholarship. Um, I mean, we can we can obviously send you some more specific information about the application process, but you'd need to apply. You would need to hit certain entry requirements, and you would actually be reimbursed the money once you'd begun studying at CAS. Fellows, if a horse jumping. I don't know, I'm afraid. I was suspect, I, that, I one, that, that, one, that, one, that one I'm not quite sure. I strongly suspect so, but I'm not sure for certain. I would have to go back and check. Um, Anna, I'm sure the answer to that one is yes. April yeah, so I know providing it's um, the campus tours are every Tuesday. Um, so when we say a campus tour, um, you will actually be shown around by a um, senior student rep. Um, and they can show you around the whole university. I mean, there's lots more flexibility um, throughout the rest of the week um, at CAS, so you can come in and visit at basically any time, but we wouldn't actually be able to give you a tour of the whole campus, although you are able to, you know, have a look around by yourself at your own leisure. Um, but the organised campus tours with, with student reps are on Tuesdays, um, so just just send us a quick email and we can send you some more information on that and confirm your places on that. And the 22nd is a Tuesday, I'm sure mm -hmm. of that, and as Rachel has said, you should be able to just book it online. Someone's typing. Someone's typing, so we've just, just the last couple of questions, guys, so if you've got any other questions, just send them over now. Oh, uh, Yuli, planning to do Masters in Sports Management. Uh, a short answer is yes, so I've already made, mentioned a couple of people who have gone into the sports business in the future. We were talking, oddly enough, uh, no promises, but we were talking about things where we might encourage people to do special areas of study, and one of the things we talked about as a possible thing for people to look at um, is sports management. A couple of the best Final year projects are afraid of being people who've looked at sports teams, as you might imagine. Quite a few people, for instance, in looking at um, football teams, what makes them work as examples of team management. So, short answer to that is yes. Julia, if you're going to look at one book before the course starts, 
look at a course called Management and Introduction by David Body, that's B-O-D-D-Y, and that's the standard textbook which we use within the first term of the course. That explains what management is, and that's very much a framework for the first um, term, first term of the course. Yusuf, what's the percentage of postgraduates finding jobs within six months from graduation? I haven't got the figures to hand. A lot no. of people go on to do uh, to do continuing courses rather than to do jobs, but it is pretty good that people are searching for jobs. I mean, um, just to, to add to what Martin was saying is um, that overall the university um, has one of the highest graduate employment rates um, with 85% of graduates finding work, work or further education within six months of graduation. Um, so that city in general, so CAS, CAS Business School is consistent with that in the management course, so it's at 85% of our undergraduate students find full-time work or further education within six months of graduation. Um. Agnes, scholarships for the six-week English course? I don't... Uh, Agnes, again, we'll have to... Um, Rachel will, will send you a quick message, but I don't think we offer any scholarships for the um, pre-sessional English courses. Um, no. Yeah, Rachel's just confirmed that we don't offer any scholarships for that. Robert, um, yes, I believe this is all being recorded, so it'll be there to view for some time. Charlene, leadership skills, absolutely, apart from people getting involved. I mean, one of the biggest single things that you can do for leadership is to get involved in some of the extracurricular activities, and you can actually put leadership into practice. But again, one of the things that we do within the first term is to actually unpick what leadership means, what's going on in those fields, um, what different styles of leadership are appropriate. So it's a little bit like the point I made earlier about active course, active teamwork, is that we get to look at what styles of leadership we look, last couple of years we looked at BP as an example, because the type of leadership which might be appropriate for a company like BP is very different when they're dealing with challenges to do with a big oil spill than dealing with challenges to do with taking over maybe another oil company in another part of the world. Is it possible to stay in the campus during the induction week? Do you mean in terms of where you would actually live? Where you would yeah, I think so. So, I mean, it's not actually um, technically most of the residence, residences aren't actually on campus, but they're very close. So, I mean, there are options that are literally um, two minutes walk from Northampton Square. And people who move in typically would move in before the induction week. We don't yeah. have, there are lots of stories around about people having difficulty finding accommodation for the induction week. As far as I know, that's not an issue for us. Mm. People get their accommodation sorted out. They do move in before induction yeah. week. Pakistani schools, colleges? Um, as far as I know, we don't have any links with any colleges, um, universities in Pakistan in particular. Um, so, no, unfortunately, we don't have any particular links, but we do accept qualifications from that region. Oh, definitely, a fair number of Pakistani students over the years. Mm. Okay, so, so last, last, last couple of questions, guys. We'll just wrap this up in the next couple of minutes. <clears throat> Our students' first year hosting in the campus. So, again, that ties in with with what we were just saying, David. So there's um, several residences which, um, off the top of my head, I don't know the deadline, but if you check on our website, um, if Rachel can maybe help you with that also, there's a, a certain date that if you apply before that date, then you are actually guaranteed um, accommodation in our residences near or around the campus. I think it's worth saying that because we're in central London, it's a rather different setup from a university which is on a big campus out of town. So we're, we're, within, we're, we're within London, so you'll be walking through bits of London to go from the residence to where you're being taught. But nevertheless, um, you, 
as soon as the doctor accommodation, so he should have just said if you apply in time, you start to get a place. Internship at a football agency. Can't promise anything, <laughs> but uh, certainly things like that have happened in yeah. the past. We've had people doing a lot of work with, um, with, 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 sport, with sports management as a whole. One of the best projects which I led was somebody who was trying to unpick what four different football teams had done to do with using the internet and he looked at their online presence and he structured it really, really well and come up with ideas and so the lost possibilities. So which applicants, just a question from Ryan, which applicants did you offer this presentation to are according to what? Um, I mean, Ryan, obviously this is a presentation focused towards the undergraduate program in management. Um, and as we mentioned, there'll be a recording available. Um, so if you would like to watch this presentation again, uh, again just send us an email. We can send out the link. Okay. okay. Just the last couple of comments, but I think that wraps up everything. So thanks very much um, to everybody for their attendance, um, for really interacting with the web chat. Uh, we hope this has been informative and really useful. And I'd just like to say a special thank you to Martin also. Um, and we wish you all good luck with your upcoming examinations. And, and thanks very much. Good luck with everyone. That's brilliant. Can we provide more scholarships? We can just try. <laughs> 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 We'll do what we can. What if the last thing possible flick the slides quickly one more time? Uh, um, I, I'll, if you just send us an email, then we'll send you a copy of the presentation again, and we could potentially send you the actual presentation so you can look at it. We could do a PDF, of it, couldn't we? Yeah. I, mean, I think we could do a PDF of the handout. Yeah, so I'll just, just let us know your contact details, and then we'll send you out a copy of the presentation. Thanks a lot.